welcome back. So in this series, we're going to be doing a little more advanced stuff from what we did previously. So in order to prepare for that, I've done a few things. I'm having internet problems. I don't know what's going on tonight when I'm recording. So I just basically got some of the libraries and copied them into files instead of getting them from a CDN. Excuse me, I'm also suffering from a bit of a cold, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so if you remember, we had built a spa, quick little simply spa, allows us to load pages quickly um, and easily. And we had created a route file and a communications file that allowed us to com communicate between jQuery um, functions and also a startup file. So <clears throat> now what we need to do is make our router a little more robust. So I have uh, already created um, a little more of a robust router file here. I'm going to kind of show you how this works. So if you remember before, what we had done is we had um, defined individual routes based on their name. So for example, here, if the dashboard URL was um, was called, it mapped to this dashboard here, which called this function. Well, actually, earlier we had, we had this function directly defined here, but I, I renamed it up here. Called this dashboard function, which hit all the sections and then showed the dashboard here. Well, as you can probably imagine, if you have 20, 30, 50, or 100 routes, this, gets, this is going to get pretty big. I mean, you're going to have, you know, all the way down to the bottom down here, right? Well, anyway, maybe even farther. It gets kind of cumbersome. So let's come up with a solution that maybe is a little more robust. So first of all, let's just leave these definitions here for right now. Go to this stuff here. We'll save that. And then let's create some middleware. What middleware is, is middleware is something that runs on every route. It's a function that runs on every route. Now, director, I'm not sure if this is uh, purposeful or why, but for some reason with director, this middleware function right here runs after these functions here run. So what I do is I allow JavaScript files elsewhere, and we'll get to this later exactly how this works, elsewhere to run after these functions have run, and this guy basically calls those. So what we're going to do later on is we're going to, and you'll see I have a little stub here for it, we're going to make a request to the server get the data, come back, and show the page. But currently, since we're not showing any data over here, we're just going to be doing kind of some localized stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what this middleware function does is, like before, it uh, hides the section, all the sections, because this is, you know, J if you need to learn more about jQuery or how this works, um, I suggest uh, Code School's videos are on jQuery and Bootstrap. Both of them are well worth the time and, and uh, money invested in it. In fact, I actually think all the Code School, I'm, I'm, I'm not affiliated with Code School at all, I love their videos and and um, and I think everything on their site is well worth the time and and you can go there and get the stuff explained in more detail. Um, anyway, so this hides all the sections on the page. This grabs the URL up here, and if you are familiar with uh, Slice and how you're grabbing the stuff off the window location, that's well, just trust me on this. Basically, you're grabbing this window location up here, you're hashing it out and and grabbing the the second one or actually actually. Yeah, the third one, because you know, programming starts at zero. Anyway, and then we're going to check to see if the last value, which we don't know here, is a number. And if it's not, then we're going to um, grab that hash value and show it. And the reason we do that is so later on we can do something like, I'll show you up here. We'll do like users and then and then like 47. And because that's grabbing a specific user, we're going to have to make a request to the server, grab the data, and come back and show. We'll, we'll get to that point. We'll get to that later on. We'll talk about rest and all that sort of fun stuff um, later on. Anyway, so back to what we're doing here. There we go. Okay, so how this works, we'll, we'll see this in action. So we'll go, we'll refresh, right, and we'll go about and dashboard. And you can see here if you go and you console log, ash, refresh, you'll see down here, dashboard, hash, dashboard, right? Okay, so that's what that's doing. Now, now that we have this router, we need to make our, our spa a little more um, robust. So basically, earlier we had to create the startup file, and I didn't really explain what's going on here. I'm going to do that right now. So first, let's create a, a let's give the, the, uh, the startup function the ability to listen to what's going on, and we're going to have it respond 
to uh, calls. Okay. So up here, first of all, we need to create a because we got to remember too, all these these um, these jQuery functions are not accessible through the, the console up here. They're not global. They're kind of like locally global inside this 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 um, file here, right? So what I like to do is I like sometimes like to create a common file, and that common file is going to have some global stuff that we don't care if the user sees or accesses through the through um, the console because it's just there's just a few global variables to kind of control the state, but not anything that matters so much. And I'll explain that here in a minute. So the very first things, two things I'm going to create is a bind lock, which will start at zero, and a start lock, which starts at zero. Okay. Now what's going to happen here? Let's get rid of some of this extra stuff here, real quick. Actually, in yeah, let's get rid of this one here. Clean up a little bit just for a minute. It's easier to see what's going on. Um, okay, we don't need this guy here at the moment, or these two guys. Okay, and we need the route file. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to basically lock the page so that um, we can uh, grab the data and then show the page. So we kind of want probably a loading loading image. Don't you think that might be good? So I happen to have one here already, which seems convenient. And we'll go to projects. I'm going to get one from a different project just because uh, oh, you know, we'll do. Let's let's just grab one online. Grab a simple little. You can see my internet's running a little bit better now. We'll just get something kind of cool real quick. You can spend a few seconds looking at some of these ones. I don't know. We'll just grab something simple. Simple enough, right? Save image as. We'll do here projects, learning, near public. We need a new folder, images. Then we'll just add this as our loading GIF. Okay. Loading. And we'll save that guy. There we go. And then we're going to go into our main index page here. We're going to call everything here as the whole page. All right. And then we'll go up to here. We'll say, actually, on whole, we're going to do something a little bit different. Let's do this. Let's let's hide everything. So, dot whole page. I'll tab all the stuff over, and then we'll have our div dot loading page. And I'm not going to make this look pretty because currently we don't really need it. So uh, obviously we'll make this look a lot prettier if you're going to do it in production or something. Actually, matters with CSS, make it in the center, make it look nice. But we're not going to do, do that right now. We're just going to have just show, just to show you how it works. So this stuff needs to be just, just oops. Uh, Style. I, and also, I know I know with Bootstrap you can do dot hidden, but I'm gonna do it this way for right now. None uh, images loading dot gif. Okay, and then we'll just add a wall real quick here. Uh, loading image in case for some reason it doesn't actually load. Okay, so if we go here and we refresh, you'll see here's our loading. Oops. Oh. And obviously, in like a production environment, you would make it centered and look nice, right? But you don't see any of our stuff, right? But if you go in here and you say jQuery whole page dot oops, dot show, you know, and then does that make sense? And then, and then obviously you're gonna hide the loading page, right? Oops, loading hide. There you go. So that, that's kind of what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the loading page initially, and then we're going to hide the loading page and show the whole page at when we're loading data. So how we're going to do that first is in the middleware. So we need to create some functions for that, right? So let's do observe start loading, and here we're going to grab same thing we just did in the console there. Um, whole page dot hide. We're going to do loading page dot show. And then we can just grab this guy here and copy and paste, say finish loading. We'll swap places with these guys here. We'll say hide, oops, hide and show. Then up here, we'll, when we verify start, 